Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can today. What's up? Here today. Well, I don't know. You said something about marriage. Did I really? Okay. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I got a question for you. Our time for these things is really fun because you're like, hey, do you want to talk about this exciting thing? And then six hours later, I'm like, <laughs> yes. And then I join. And then you're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, remember the thing that you said you want to talk about. And then you don't. I remember. Okay. Here's a question. I'm kind of curious. Okay. So. One thing I talk about a lot for my kind of degenerate poly relationship stuff is that like, um, obviously it's not for everybody. Maybe one or 2% of the population maybe can do this kind of stuff. Um, I, like I don't recommend my lifestyle for any other person, et cetera, et cetera. I do shit like this all the time. Here's kind of a question though. I'm kind of curious. I don't know if you've thought about this or if you've got this in your polling stuff. Um, do you think there might be a possibility that people actually aren't built for monogamous relationships? When I look at like the rates of infidelity, uh, the rates of like marriage divorces, do you think that that's actually something we force really hard that people actually have a really fucking hard time with? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Dude, in my data, which uh, I could talk about like how reliable I think it is, but in relationships, you know, over 20 years, mm -hmm. monogamous men reported cheating like at 40%, like 40% of them reported cheating. Mm -hmm. Crazy, crazy high. And that was that, were those in relationships or were those in marriages? In relationships. In relationships. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. But including marriages, it was just like the umbrella mm -hmm. that includes, and like, and even like, so I was measuring bind by a length of relationship, um, which is different than measuring bind by age. But like other studies, if you bind by age, usually finds like twenty to thirty percent mm -hmm. um, of men of older men cheat. Why do you think? Um, why do you think? I guess as a society, <laughs> we gravitate towards monogamous stuff so much. Well, I mean, if you don't, you get you know the the orbiting circle of angry chimps you know the i've been doing too many podcasts lately i don't remember what i have said to whom you know the the angry like if you remember, this was an issue with the mormons the mormons all like went to utah and they're like woo we're doing what we want now and they're like what do we want polygamy what do we want it now and then suddenly fast forward a generation or two and you have like 40 percent of men are single and can't get wives because all the wives are already married and then they become like angry Mm -hmm. uh, and if you have wars, then this is great. This is like a stable thing. But if you don't have wars, you give a bunch of angry men. Anyway, so basically, I think monogamy was invented to basically placate the angry men that are like on the outside of the tribe. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Do you think that most people could handle open relationship stuff if they were to like give it an honest try, like outside of judgment from peers and and society, basically? I think like a much greater like let's say hypothetically. The, we move to a country where polygamy, poly, polyamory, I'm sorry, is the norm. Like my guess is a much higher percentage of people who say they're monogamous now would actually flourish in that society. But you do have like monogamy is kind of a, like people get jealous. And I think that this is not like a personal failing. I think this is hardwired. Mm -hmm. um, and until we have brain modification technology, I think if you just, sometimes it's not worth it to have to like, maybe you could work through your jealousy if you spent 10 years in intensive therapy, but do you really want to spend your life doing that? Probably not. It's well, quite easier to just... So something that's rest. interesting about that is I feel like we kind of take it for granted. God damn it, of course. I feel like we kind of take it for granted yeah. that like, if you have jealousy in a relationship, that's like a good indication that you probably should just be, um, that, that you should be monogamous. But I feel like if you have jealousy in any other area, people would tell you to work on it. And I think we do have jealousies in, in other areas. For instance, if you want to go to a basketball game and you've got one ticket to give away, like whatever friend you choose, like your other friends are probably gonna get a little bit jealous. Like, oh, I wish you would have picked me. But you would never say like, okay, well, the obvious solution to this is you should just have like one friend, right? You would say, well, no, like it's okay to feel a little bit left out or whatever, but like those are natural feelings that you work through. And I think you said as much for your relationships. You never, it's, you don't ever say that you never get jealous. You say that, well, sometimes I have it, but you know, it's just part of a relationship and you're gonna work through it or whatever. Yeah. But to be fair, I think I'm like pretty consistent on this. So mm -hmm. I think it's okay. Oh, sorry, somebody else. Okay. But I think it's okay for some people to be like, hey, I'm just too jealous. I don't want to work on this. And I think this is fine. Mm -hmm. Similarly, I think if you get jealous about like your girl, like even talking to another man, uh -huh. and if she does, like your fucking brain explodes, and this is just so intense. Like, I also think that this is fine. Mm -hmm. I don't think that other people should be forced to engage in your relationship, but I think it is like okay for you to go search for somebody who is fine never talking to another man again. Uh, so I think I'm like quite consistent about this. Saying something is like okay if this is the hand that you're dealt is very different from saying that this is ideal. I think in general. Oh wait, hold on. I'm actually so curious. How, I feel like I've come at you with a similar question before. Fuck, what was it? Something to do with like how do I know if there's an acceptable boundary to set or not? 
And it felt like when I asked you that question, you had a lot, you had a really hard time computing that question because your answer was like, your question is nonsense. Like your boundary can be whatever you want it to be. It sounded like that's what you were essentially telling me. But now it sounds like you're saying that there are some boundaries or some forms of jealousy that you ought to get over and some forms of jealousy that you ought not to get over. How do you determine like which one is something like, this is something you should definitely work through. And this is something that it's okay to have and not to work through. Wait, I thought I was saying the opposite. I, I feel like I was just arguing that like all boundaries are okay, even if they're absurd. Oh, did I miss you? Okay. so. You so you're saying that if somebody said they had a boundary, whether it's like, I want to find a partner who doesn't even talk to people or look at people of the opposite sex or ever have desire, you think that that type of thing is an okay thing to have? Yeah, I think that is okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it's obviously not ideal. Like, functionally in the world, this is going to be really hard to have and mm -hmm. be happy. Like, the fact of having that as, like, an experience where if you're somebody that you love is doing that makes you freaked. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think that is, like, inherently bad. Interesting. I think I would disagree, but okay. Would disagree. You would? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think that there are probably, I think there's probably like a boundary. There's there's going to be some range of normal human experience that um, I'm probably going to pathologize if you fall outside that range and say, this is something you need to fix. For instance, let's say that you were like, I want a girlfriend who only turns to the left. I don't ever want to date somebody that turns to the right. Like I would probably pathologize. I'd say that it's probably something unhealthy with your mind that you need to fix. What do you mean by unhealthy? Um, a, a little tautological, but like fall, falls outside of the boundary of like, this is like an expected normal human response to something that like, it's, that's like, so it's like so far out of bounds that like, it's probably something that you should work on fixing. Okay. So your, your definition of what is okay, something that like, if few enough people think that this is normal, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. Probably. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm sure you can think of exceptions to this rule. Can we? I'm sure there are many points in history uh, where everybody was thinking one thing, and if you went back in time, you probably would disagree with them. I'm trying to think. Can you think? Can you think of any? I feel like, because I feel like that's generally how we would pathologize a lot of behaviors. That if it's if it's incredibly rare. And it has probably some, maybe you need the extra qualifier if it has a detrimental impact on your life. So in this case, it would probably inhibit you from ever finding a partner. I think detrimental is like a much stronger criteria than normal. Mm -hmm. Like, like I was raised in a culture where basically everything I'm doing right now is very abnormal. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is okay. Like, just because like society thinks a thing does not mean that it's right. And it like might be a good indicator in a lot of areas, but like, I would not consider it to be an absolute rule, just more like a guidance line. But like, I think the uh, concept of addiction that like by engaging in this thing, it's sort of your options in life are hindered. That's like a much more strong position to take gotcha okay um, right, and you could very much argue like hey if you are the kind of person that don't want doesn't want your partner talking to anybody else any other man you're just gonna have a shitty time in life because you're not gonna find anybody who joyfully likes that boundary yeah that preference is essentially choosing to be single forever essentially right which i guess a person right. can make that choice if they want to are you what is your criteria in your head for pathologizing a behavior or do you not do you don't believe in pathologizing anything I don't think so. I think it's just like, what is the consequences of this thing? Like, I think it is okay for every, anybody to have any requests that they want of anybody else. Uh, the question is, are they going to be able to get that? And is it, are they trying to force anybody? Mm -hmm. hmm. Like a lot of uh, very fundamentalist religious people have norms where women are not allowed to talk to men and everybody in that culture, like thinks this is chill. Probably the women mostly also think this is chill. Uh, yeah, I think there's actually you, a name for this in Islam that once you hit a certain age, you're not supposed to like do like social activities with people of the opposite sex, I think. Yeah, that's correct. Right. Yeah. Huh. Okay. I was just kind of curious on your thoughts on that. I One of the funniest things to me, I, I might have even brought this up to you before, is that like I'll read sometimes relationship posts where like both partners are incredibly upset and they've like, like one partner cheated on the other and then they go on a little break and then the other partner fucks somebody on the break and then they both come back and they're both upset for like fucking other people. And I see situations like this sometimes like, why not just like figure out some rules for like an open relationship? Like it seems so fucking stupid. I feel like I see it pretty often enough that I'm like, I, like it's so confusing to me, but. Yeah, I think people get really jealous. Sometimes I'm like, dude, everybody should be poly. You man, like I talked to a guy who wants to fuck somebody else. I'm like, why don't you just be poly? And like, it's not good until I realize they don't want their girl to fuck anybody else. And I'm like, okay, I'm not, you can have asymmetrical preferences. Like I have asymmetrical preferences, but like, op 
I don't know. It's, it seems like pretty hard to find somebody who's okay with you fucking a bunch of other people while they're not allowed to. Do you have, yeah, I guess do you, cause that's really common now in the red pill space is that they all push for, um, they all push for the one sided open relationships. Do you have opinions on these? Really? Things? Yes. Uh, like it's ubiquitous in the red pill space now that they all say that if you're a high value man, you should be juggling multiple women. Yeah. And that's like the norm basically for high value men, which yeah, I mean, this is the, like the spinning the plates or whatever, but like, this is different. Right? No, 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 not spitting the plates. They're saying like you like openly acknowledge like your girl knows that if you're a high value man, you're going to be fucking multiple women even while you're like in a committed relationship or whatever. But it's only on the man's side. I do think that generally women tolerate cheating in men a little bit more than men tolerate cheating in women. Um, do you really think that's true? What do you mean by tolerate? Do you mean like won't break up with somebody over it or like are okay with it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, are less likely to break up with someone over it. Hmm. But also, women cheat less, so I don't know. Who is more likely to break up over cheating, men versus women? I'm curious about that. Yeah, let's see. So men are more likely to cheat than women. 20% of men and 13% of women reported having sex. It sounds like outside of a relationship. Huh. It's definitely higher if you increase the age, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm curious. Um, huh, okay. All right, bye. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed.